This is a story about Hollywood rising star. Amelia's story is far from a tragic tale. But the deeper she digs, the closer she gets to a truth that may not only shatter everything she thought she knew, but threaten her own life in the process. Will she unravel the twisted narrative before it's too late? Listen this story till end and subscribe me let's start. The crisp aroma of lavender oil mixed with the cloying scent of stale perfume. It wasn't a combination I'd ever imagined, wouldn't have dared to. But here I was, surrounded by it, in Amelia's apartment, the very space that had witnessed her final act of despair, it wasn't supposed to be me here. I wasn't supposed to be the one tasked with sorting through the remnants of her life, the tangible whispers of a lost story. But fate, that cruel puppeteer, had other plans, Amelia was, or rather, had been, a rising star. Her face, once vibrant and full of life, now stared from every magazine cover, every billboard, a cruel reminder of the future she'd stolen from herself. Officially ruled a suicide, the circumstances surrounding her death were shrouded in a suffocating silence. The media, ever hungry for a narrative, spun tales of heartbreak, career woes, and the pressures of fame. But none of them knew the real Amelia, the woman behind the meticulously constructed facade. And I did. Maybe not intimately, not deeply, but we'd crossed paths, briefly, inconsequentially, or so I thought. We'd met at a charity gala, a brief exchange of pleasantries amidst the clinking of glasses and the buzz of forced conversations. But in those few fleeting moments, I saw a glimmer in her eyes that didn't belong in the world she inhabited. A flicker of something raw, something vulnerable, hidden beneath the layers of practiced smiles and orchestrated poses, that fleeting glimpse became an anchor when I learned of her death. I couldn't shake the feeling of responsibility, an absurd notion I knew. But it was there, a gnawing ache in the pit of my stomach. And so, here I was, amidst the remnants of her shattered life. The apartment was an embodiment of controlled chaos. Clothes spilled out of wardrobes, scripts and magazines littered the coffee table, and empty pill bottles sat on the bathroom counter, a grim testament to the battles fought in private. Each object, each detail, felt like a piece of a puzzle I could never complete. As I delved deeper, I stumbled upon a hidden diary tucked away in a drawer. Its worn leather cover felt strangely warm in my hands, the embossed initials on the front sending a shiver down my spine. Inside, a torrent of emotions spilled onto the pages, a stark contrast to the carefully curated image Amelia presented to the world. There were entries filled with self-doubt, battling insecurities masked by confidence, the constant pressure to maintain an impossible standard. She wrote about the loneliness that clung to her despite being surrounded by people, the feeling of being adrift in a sea of artificiality. There were mentions of a relationship, a love that seemed both passionate and volatile, leaving behind a trail of hurt and confusion. The entries hinted at manipulation, emotional control, a power dynamic that left Amelia feeling increasingly isolated and trapped. But there was another aspect, an undercurrent of strength battling the darkness. There were hopes, dreams for a future where she could reclaim control, rediscover the woman she wanted to be. An unfinished draft of a script lay nestled amongst the diary entries, titled Unveiling. It was a story of a woman breaking free, reclaiming her voice, and forging her own path. The more I read, the more the pieces clicked into place. The heartbreak narrative fueled by the media felt hollow, a convenient narrative that masked a more sinister truth. As I closed the diary, a chilling realization dawned on me, Amelia didn't take her own life. She was pushed. But where was the evidence? Where was the smoking gun? I felt a deep sense of inadequacy, of helplessness. Who would believe the whisperings of a diary against the carefully constructed narrative of a perfect life tragically cut short, but I couldn't ignore the gnawing feeling in my gut. Amelia deserved more than a fabricated narrative. She deserved a voice, driven by a sense of purpose, I started digging. I contacted journalists who had written about her death, hoping to find someone willing to listen beyond the surface. I reached out to colleagues and acquaintances, searching for someone who might know more about her relationship, about the man who haunted the pages of her diary. It was a long, arduous effort, filled with dead ends and dismissive shrugs. 
But then, a small thread emerged. One of her co-stars, a woman who had witnessed the volatile dynamic of their relationship, came forward. She spoke about the constant belittling, the public displays of affection used as a tool of control, the isolation he'd woven around Amelia, it wasn't enough, not yet. But it was a start, a crack in the carefully constructed facade. With each piece of information, I gathered, Amelia's story began to take shape, not the tragic tale of a starlet lost to depression as the media claimed, but a narrative of a talented woman caught in a web of manipulation and control. However, as I delved deeper, a new layer of unease began to settle in my gut. The more I spoke to people, the more inconsistencies emerged about the night of Amelia's death. The official narrative portrayed a solitary evening, ending with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. But whispers began to surface, hushed rumors of an argument, a struggle heard from outside the apartment. These rumors led me to Amelia's neighbor, a reclusive old woman who claimed to have witnessed a figure leaving the apartment building shortly after the supposed suicide. Fear tingled at the edges of my curiosity. Was this simply another unreliable witness, another fragment of a distorted memory, or was there something more sinister at play, driven by a mix of determination and paranoia, I reached out to a private investigator, a man known for his discretion and tenacity. He took the case with a skeptical eyebrow raised, but his eyes held a spark of intrigue. Days turned into weeks, filled with dead ends and frustrating silences. The trail seemed to vanish into thin air, the inconsistencies dismissed as mere speculation. Just as I was about to throw in the towel, the investigator called, his voice laced with a cautious excitement. There's something, he said, his voice barely a whisper. A security camera footage from a nearby building captured a man leaving Amelia's apartment complex around the time of her death. He's wearing a hoodie, face partially obscured, but the build. It matches the description you gave me of, he didn't need to finish the sentence. The man from her diary, the one who haunted the pages with a chilling possessiveness, the one who seemed to have meticulously controlled her life, was now a shadow lurking at the edge of her death. As I sat in Amelia's quiet apartment, surrounded by the remnants of her life, the scent of lavender and stale perfume now heavy and oppressive, a new wave of unease washed over me. The deeper I went, the more I questioned my own judgment. Was I chasing shadows, driven by an unhealthy fixation on a stranger's tragedy, or was I on the verge of uncovering the truth? The diary lay open on the coffee table, the unfinished script beside it. Unveiling, it declared, a promise that remained unfulfilled. I picked up the pen, a sudden urge to write, to give voice to the story Amelia could no longer tell, but as I stared at the blank page, the words wouldn't come. The truth, it seemed, remained shrouded in an unsettling ambiguity. Was Amelia the victim of her own demons, pushed to the edge by an industry that devoured its own, or was there a more deliberate hand at play? The answer, like the figure in the hoodie, continued to remain tantalizingly out of reach, leaving me with a chilling truth, in the world of illusion and manipulation, it was often difficult to tell the difference between a carefully crafted narrative and the horrifying reality that lurked beneath the surface, days turned into weeks, then months. The private investigator, a man named William with a perpetually furrowed brow and eyes that seemed to hold a thousand secrets, remained my only connection to the truth. He provided me with periodic updates, each one more frustrating than the last. The man in the hoodie, he reported, his voice gravelly over the phone, appears to be a ghost. No record, no trace. Like he materialized out of thin air just to vanish again. Discouragement gnawed at me. Was I chasing a phantom, fueled by paranoia and grief? Amelia's face, once vibrant in my memory, started to blur at the edges, replaced by a gnawing fear that I was losing myself in this obsessive quest. One night, however, a crumpled envelope arrived in my mailbox. Inside, a single photograph. It was grainy, taken from a distance, but the scene it captured sent a jolt of adrenaline through me. It was Amelia and the man from her diary, standing outside a restaurant, their faces obscured by the darkness. But it wasn't the picture itself that sent shivers down my spine, it was the location. The restaurant was a mere block away from my own apartment building, a cold dread settled in my stomach. The man who might have played a role in Amelia's death was closer than I ever imagined, 
possibly watching my every move, living life under the same sky, breathing the same air. Sleep evaded me that night. Every creak of the floorboards, every rustle outside my window sent my heart racing. The world outside my apartment, once familiar and comforting, now seemed sinister and full of hidden eyes. The next morning, driven by a desperate need for answers and a reckless sense of defiance, I walked to the restaurant depicted in the photograph. It was small, quaint, and seemingly unremarkable. I sat at a table, my gaze scanning the surrounding faces, hoping to recognize the man from the picture. As I waited, a faint sense of deja vu washed over me. I could have sworn I'd seen this place before, perhaps on one of my walks in the neighborhood. The memory felt hazy, but it was there, a nagging echo in the back of my mind. Suddenly, a voice broke the silence. Can I help you with something? I turned, my heart pounding a frantic rhythm against my ribs. Standing before me was a man with a disarming smile, his eyes crinkling at the corners. He was older than the man in the picture, his hair streaked with grey, but there was an undeniable resemblance, a shared sharpness in the jawline, a ghost of the same darkness in his eyes, I. I think I might be at the wrong place, I stammered, my voice barely above a whisper. The man remained unfazed, his smile widening ever so slightly, perhaps not, he said, his voice smooth like honey. Do you mind if I sit? Before I could answer, he pulled out a chair and sat down, his gaze fixed on me. A wave of nausea washed over me. Every instinct in my body screamed at me to run, to escape his unsettling presence. He spoke again, his voice laced with a disarming calmness. You seem troubled. Perhaps I can help. I stared at him, speechless, my mind racing. Was he here to threaten me? To silence me? Or was it all just a bizarre coincidence, a cruel twist of fate, then, with a clarity that surprised me, the hazy memory resurfaced. I had been here before, months ago, with Amelia. We'd had lunch, laughing and sharing secrets in the very same booth we occupied now, a single tear rolled down my cheek as I looked at the man across from me, the pieces finally clicking into place. The whispers of a neighbor, the inconsistencies in the narrative, the sudden appearance of the photograph, it was all a game, a carefully orchestrated performance to manipulate me, to make me question my own sanity. He took a step closer, his smile gone. His eyes, the same shade of cold steel as the ones that haunted the pages of Amelia's diary, now held a chilling glint of triumph. You see, he said, his voice a low growl, the truth is rarely black and white. Sometimes, the line between victim and perpetrator is blurred beyond recognition, then, in a move swift and practiced, he leaned in closer, his lips brushing my ear. And sometimes, he whispered, his voice laced with a chilling finality, the story ends before it even begins, the world spun. The last thing I saw before the darkness consumed me was the man's face, contorted in a triumphant smirk, the ghost of Amelia's unfinished story forever etched in the depths of his eyes, my world went dark. Then, a rush of cool air against my face. I sputtered, coughing, disoriented. I was lying on the sidewalk outside the restaurant, the midday sun harsh against my eyelids. My head throbbed, a dull ache radiating from the base of my skull, had it been a dream? A terrifying, vivid nightmare fueled by months of relentless pursuit. I scrambled to my feet, searching for the man, for any sign of what had transpired only moments ago, the street was bustling with life, oblivious to the drama that had almost unfolded. People hurried past, a symphony of honking horns and chatter filling the air. I looked back at the restaurant, half expecting the chilling figure to be watching from the window, but it was empty, my phone buzzed in my pocket. It was William, the private investigator. I have news, his voice was urgent. The man in the hoodie, the one you were looking for, there's been a break in the case. He's been arrested. Apparently, he's been implicated in a series of financial crimes, running a sophisticated con scheme. My heart skipped a beat. Was it true? Was this the answer I'd been desperately seeking? He's also under investigation for an alleged incident of domestic abuse, William continued, his voice grave. 
There's a possibility he might be questioned about Amelia's death as well, suddenly, a wave of relief washed over me. It wasn't a perfect answer, not a complete closure, but it was progress. The truth might not be completely clear, but at least the man who had haunted me, who had manipulated Amelia, would face some form of accountability. Later that day, I sat in Amelia's apartment, the scent of lavender still lingering faintly in the air. I picked up her unfinished script, unveiling. This time, the words flowed. I wrote, not of a tragic victim, but of a resilient woman, a fighter who had fought against the darkness, even in the face of overwhelming odds. As I finished writing, a sense of peace settled over me. I would never know the full extent of Amelia's story, the details of her final moments. But I knew one thing for certain, her voice, her fight, would not be silenced, the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the city. I closed Amelia's script, a single tear tracing a path down my cheek. It wasn't a tear of sorrow, but of bittersweet hope. Perhaps, in unveiling the truth, I had found a way to honor the woman who had unknowingly changed my life, reminding me that even in the face of darkness, even when the line between truth and manipulation blurs, there is always a flicker of light, a chance to find peace, and perhaps, even healing.